listen, watch, wait, observe. Do you feel like you're careening through your day going from one thing to the next or going from one platform to the next like I do? I wonder how do we slow down? Oh, do you feel more relaxed now? I mean, I do. I feel like I, I took a breath, although it's a little uh, different for me to draw on stage. I've done it before, but um, I felt like when I draw, I get very um, in the zone. I get relaxed, and I'm observing, and I feel a connection with who I'm drawing. Did you feel a connection with me? I felt it with you. Now. If you were as lucky as I was as a young girl to have parents who, who knew what you liked to do and helped you do it, like if you were into performing, they would buy you costumes, or if you liked soccer, they would take you to the park. Now, I was a little girl, and I loved to draw. So my parents gave me pencil and paper, and I drew all the time. I was a really shy kid, and it was a way for me to be alone and to draw and be, you know, just be on my own, and I, I learned I could communicate with my drawings, and I made my mother smile, and I realized I was hooked. I could make others happy. One of my early drawings. Now, it's been a quiet four decades with The New Yorker. That's how print is, or was, really. It was a communication with my audience, but I didn't hear anything back. People didn't write me. That's okay, they just didn't write cartoonists. Um, and my editors didn't talk to me, so it was a really quiet time for four decades. And then the internet happened, and we, d we changed the way we communicate with each other. This is one of my early drawings. It was quiet. About life, about things that we're thinking about, things that we feel funny about. And then the internet happened. And I first noticed it during the Arab Spring. I drew this during the Arab Spring. Do you remember when we were, we were helping each other with Twitter? We were talking to each other. We were communicating around the world. And it was something new. It was really quite new. And I changed my drawing a bit. I mean, I didn't change the style, but I changed the way I interacted with the world. I started publishing more and more cartoons online, not with The New Yorker, not with anybody, but just for my own communication with my audience. And I felt like I was talking to people about things not only that interested me, but that I heard them talking about. This was being talked about several years ago. And I would get feedback from my, from my viewers on Twitter, on mostly Twitter at that point. I found that I was communicating with people, and I love that. <laughs> I would take daily events, things that I read in the news, and this was actually in the news, not quite like this. It was more, uh, I, I sort of uh, exaggerated it a little bit, but there was an issue where a woman was becoming a CEO of a major company, and 
the media went bonkers, like, she's pregnant, how can she run a company? So I was talking on the internet, I was sharing these things on the internet. And then, I've always done political cartoons. Ever since I started at the New Yorker, uh, New Yorker type political cartoons that are quiet and, and, and sort of slightly snarky or, you know, quiet cartoons, which is fine and I enjoy that. And then, this next cartoon I did at a time when everybody in the US was uh, shocked and, and did a lot of soul searching. And that was 9-11. When we were attacked, like everybody else, I was re recalibrating my life. Like, what am I doing? Can I, can I be funny anymore? We, were, we as, a mer as a country, had joined the rest of the world in, in dealing with, with this. So I did this cartoon, The New Yorker published it, and I thought, well, okay, I'm, I'm back on track. I'm gonna try to dedicate myself to more political cartoons. I, I have an audience, I can talk online. Let's, let me do more political cartoons. And so what the, the beauty of the internet for me is that you get to talk to people around the globe. You get to see worlds around the globe. You get to understand better than you did before. And I began doing cartoons about women's rights globally. This is an example of one. For many decades I had thought, I'm an American woman, that's all I know, that's all I can do. Uh, I'm gonna have to stick with that. But now I realize I'm a global woman. I can speak about women's issues around the world. And I can speak about things that mean something to, to me and mean something to other people as well. We were talking. And then the election of 2016 happened. And I pushed myself further to, to, to express my anger, because many of us were very angry. And I drew cartoons like this. during the election. And, I, and, I, uh, and, then the, and then the election was over, and I had to, again, think about things, like what am I doing? Is this really who I am? And I began to pull back and, and, and not join the loudness that I felt around me, but try to pull back and, and figure out who I was and what I wanted to really draw about and communicate with my audience. I had to reassess. So, now, I love technology. Um, my family makes fun of me because when we got our first personal computer at home, I was the one that was ripping it out of the box and jamming the floppy disk into the whatever outlet I could find because I was raring to go. I really wanted to get going. And so, a couple of years ago, I began to, I got an iPad and I began to live draw from the television. And there was a State of the Union address, which is really pretty dull in the US. And I started drawing what I saw and tweeting it out immediately, and people picked up on this. They really kind of enjoy these live drawings. Um, and I did it more for myself, for my amusement, for my, for my friends on, on uh, Twitter. I would, I would get to, I would find events that were nationally talked about, like this one. I walked into my hotel room one day, and I turned on the news, and, and Obama was talking about ISIS, but he was wearing a tan suit. And that's all anybody fo focused on. Like, why is he wearing a, a tan suit? So I, I pick up on things like that, that are, that are humorous, but can be serious. Um, and then I began to get hired to do these things. I went to the, uh, na the uh, Democratic National Convention and live drew the speakers and the environment. And I also live draw the people behind the scenes, not just the famous people, but I like to try to get a, a sense of what's going on wherever I am, because my my friends, the people who, who like me on Twitter, who follow me, they, they say, I like to see what you're doing. I like to be there, because I can't be there. I can see what you're doing. I'm communicating, I'm sharing. I went to the Oscars, I've been there three times now, which is really fun. This is the red carpet, so I'll draw the red carpet, but I'll also draw the stars that are walking down the red carpet if they slow down. Um, and the singers, and then the events that happen that nobody else can capture, I captured it. I mean, it's, she tripped. <laughs> she was fine. And the people behind the scenes who are touching up the Oscars. I wasn't supposed to be here, I didn't know that. I went, somebody, one of the cameramen took me behind the scenes and he said, oh, you can go back there. And I went back there and then somebody, some official guy came up to me and said, you're not supposed to be here. But I got the drawing. The woman that was happily guarding a certain entrance to the to the Oscars. 
I went to the Women's March, both of them, in, in Washington. That was very moving. And I went to the March on Washington um, about gun control in the US. I think it was global, right? It was around the world. There were, there were other marches about gun control. And I went to the, um, I, I observed the uh, eclipse in New York. I didn't get to go to the, the zone, but I went to New York and, and watched people watching. Um, I draw on my phone and I love drawing. If I don't have my iPad with me, or even if I do, it just depends. I'll take my phone out and, and use my finger and draw. This is Radio City where the Tonys were held this year and I was waiting in line. Never waste a mo moment. So I draw what I see there and send it out immediately. And on the subway too. Now you have internet on the subway in New York. So I can draw people on the subway while I have the long ride from uptown and share these online. And I'm drawing Dublin. I got here on Monday and I've been drawing what I see, trying to get a sense of the city and the people. And I'm drawing you guys. These are some I did yesterday. I try to capture words. If I, if I hear something that is poignant, I'll put it in the drawing. I feel like I'm communicating with my audience. And when I found out about the repeal of the eighth, I was in France. And I immediately got my phone out and drew this because I felt a connection with Ireland. I felt a, a warmth towards Ireland and I wanted to uh, express my feelings about what had just happened. Because it was a big event, it, obviously. <laughs> it was a global event. And I wanted to be a part of that conversation. I still draw about <laughs> Trump. Trump. Um, but I, I try to be, uh, I try to listen to myself and, and respond to what, what's happening in a, in a more thoughtful way. That's just me. And, um, and I, I did this yesterday or day before yesterday about the immigration, um, I don't even have a word for it. What's been going on in the U.S. with immigration? Um, and expressing my feelings and sharing it with, with people and trying to, 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 to enhance the dialogue. Because I think, now when you are troubled or concerned or worried or confused, you go to a good friend, right? And you talk it out, you try to figure it out with that person. You communicate, you share, and they try to help you. The best thing you can do for a friend is to listen. I see cartoons as communication, I see them as dialogue, I see them as listening and sharing. And that's what I try to do with cartoons and I think as a global community now, we have to pull back and try to get rid of the anger so much and listen to each other and help each other. Thank you very much.